So in today's world, um, a lot of the processes that you have in manufacturing are really standardized in terms of when the event occurs. Forward flushing happens at the beginning of the process, right? That's a pretty tried and true manufacturing concept. But because Dynamics 365 has really been designed um, as a platform that allows for you to do other things other than just manufacturing. There are also other technologies that we can use to automate your processes for the integration, for example, to external systems or to send notifications to customers when an operation is completed if you so desire it. And a lot of that occurs then in technologies that we call, for example, the power platform. So what I wanted to highlight here was that obviously we've been in Dynamics 365 this entire time, but what we can also do is that we can hook up any of these types of actions or what we call business events inside of Dynamics 365 from a manufacturing perspective, and then create what we call flows uh, inside of what, what is called the power platform to automate even more. And these are end user based tools. These aren't tools that require active development. These are tools that you can basically use based off of data events that occur inside of your environment. So the example of that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new flow here just to highlight this. I'm gonna create an automated flow. I'm not going to use a template to start this off. I'm going to type in dynamics because I want an event to occur when something occurs inside of dynamics, I want it to do something. I'm gonna select dynamics 365 and I'm gonna say when a business event occurs inside of my environment. So we've got lots of environments here because we are a uh, dynamics uh, reseller obviously. And so I'm gonna select the one that we're interacting with. But for example, here the category, when an AP uh, invoice is generated, a purchase order, a manufacturing order, you can add to these business events as you see fit. But the example here would be asset management, just to kind of highlight on that one. When a maintenance request is created inside of a particular legal entity or a tax ID is the way I would equate this to, what I want it to do is I want it to actually send an email, for example, to a person saying that the request was generated. So, but that doesn't just stop there. This is a really simple example, right? What I can also do if I add an action inside of here, here are all of the different actions that you can integrate then with all these other systems. Maybe when production occurs with it, you have uh, specs. Um, an example would be uh, an actual uh, router, for example. A lot of the electronics industries have it where when you go through and do a remanufacturing process, you have a test file that's generated. Maybe you want to take that test file and put that into a Dropbox location or a OneDrive location. Maybe you want to go through an approval process once a production order is finished or when a maintenance request is requested. So all of these different types of actions can also then be used in your production process to integrate other tools and systems to go and report information outwards, meaning from the system or caused by Dynamics 365, but it can also be consumed inside of Dynamics 365 as well. Meaning if you wanted to have it where your CNC router is actually reporting back that it finished and how much time it took for a particular production order, you could theoretically use a flow then to post that particular time to the production order to record that without even having a human being touch anything as part of that process. So a very, very, uh, what we would say a leading concept um, that allows for that integration between multiple systems and that automation. Um, obviously, that's going to become much more common uh, throughout time here.